I was walking into a room the other day and these guys were talking about tender and I'm thinking, yeah, battery tenders are really important. And they just looked at me. I didn't realize there was an app. Well, I did after I thought about it, but I'm not talking about that one this time. You need a battery tender if you don't already have one. And nine technical tips, technical writing tips. They're advanced tips for writers. We're going to talk about this week on your Indian Motorcycle Radio. Welcome to Indian Motorcycle Radio. And I'm your host, Reverend Ken Blanchard. This is the show about Indian motorcycles and the people that ride and love them. At the time of this recording, it's 60 degrees in the nation's capital, and they're talking about it might snow in a couple of days. But it is December 2020, and what a year it has been. Are you getting ready for the holidays? Have you put your bike up already for the cold weather? Up north, it has snowed already. If you're above Pennsylvania, you've had some snow. If you're below North Carolina, you probably haven't had any cold weather yet, and you might be able to ride a little bit longer than the rest of us. But if you've already put your bike away, I want to give you some holiday gift giving stuff. Maybe you buy it for yourself. Here's a here's a couple of things I think um, are worth somebody who loves you to buy for you or even to buy for yourself. Number one, gloves. Yeah, gloves never go out of style. There's always a newer batch, a newer, more comfortable, lighter stuff that don't make your fingertips freeze. Sometimes the ones that they say are great are not. You know, you might have a few already. This is a good time to look for some gloves. How about a balaclava? They got some cold weather ones if you're still riding right now that um, you can breathe and actually use it to um, shovel stuff with. No, that white stuff, that snow. Mm-hmm. Now, you guys living in South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida, you don't know what I'm talking about. But... Those northern cats, man, you might have to go outside. And if you don't want to quit, if you still want to ride, even up until, you know, till the snows actually hit the streets and you don't have any cold weather gear yet, here's an idea. Start looking for snowmobile gear. Yeah, you can get a whole outfit, a jumpsuit that you could probably wear over your business attire if you commute to work for snowmobiling that's a lot cheaper than what they sell for bikers and motorcyclists. Mm Mm-hmm. Like I know a company that you can buy a jumpsuit that might be $1,500, close to $2,000, but you can buy a snowmobile suit for about $200. Mm. Check it out. Now, the good thing is the built version of an Evolution helmet in Bluetooth. If you've never ridden with a Bluetooth headgear, I highly recommend it. Even though the lower priced helmets are heavy, heavier, the full face, I know some of you guys hate full face, but if you have a Bluetooth helmet, you can listen to your music, you can answer the phone while you ride. All you have to do is take your index finger and push a button on your cheek and you can hear your phone and talk while you're riding. Yeah, if you've never done that, check it out. And then you get real bold. Sometimes they have a little wire connection where you can hardwire it to your phone or MP3 device or whatever and listen if you don't have music coming through your sound system. Just an idea. Bluetooth helmets. Depending on who you buy it from, they're between 200 and 500 bucks. Not the ones that you just stick on extra. The ones that are built that way. They have the audio system already put in there. All you have to do is plug your jack into the, like you would a phone. Charge your Bluetooth, sync it to your phone, you're good to go. Not hard at all. Everybody's talking about Tinder, and for a long time, they were talking about, hey, have you got that Tinder app? And I thought, Tinder has an app? But, you know, it's not the Tinder that you're dating with. That's not the one I'm looking at. I'm looking at the Tinder that's the Tinder that you charge your battery with. It is a must-have if you are a motorcyclist. If you have a lot of electronic stuff, like you have the 
the fabled roadmaster that I'm dreaming about, it eats up a lot of energy. Yes. So when you are not riding, you can add these little boxes. They're a 1.25 amp charger that um, automatically charge and prevent overcharging of your battery. It's low maintenance. It's not hardcore. Um, They extend the battery life. I've used them on seven, 10 year bikes and never changed the battery. It managed the battery all that time. It monitors the power level. It has like LED lights to tell you the state of the charge. And if the battery voltage drops too far under load, it'll let you know. Um, It has spark proof. It has a way that you can connect it to your battery watts parked and you hook it up to a regular plug in the house or the garage and it prevents uh, over charging is uh, detects reverse polarity to make sure that it's the right power it's a plug in play for real the one I use is called um, what's that thing called battery tender plus by Deltran and I'm going to put a link to it it's an Amazon link that you can look at it and just compare. I think I paid $69 for mine at some store, but I should have got it from Amazon because it's only $49.99 right now. Battery tender, not the tender with the chicks in it. I'm talking about the tender that you use your battery with. I totally had that wrong for a minute. And if you put your bike up for the season and you're not riding anymore and you're living in that cold zone, like from Maryland above, think about putting your bike up on a stand. Get the wheels, the tires off the ground. You'll prevent your bike from having uh, those flat spots on the tires. I actually had that for the first time on my Harley. Mm Mm-hmm. From just sitting there. Now, one season won't do it, but I hadn't ridden in a while, so that's why it happened. But you can definitely store your bike better if you just lift a little bit all that pressure, a little bit off the tires. Don't have to be totally off, but enough that you can move it if you want to. Might make a difference. Extend the life of your tire. And if you get those really cool jacks that you can move around, you can move your bike around in your garage without uh, having to roll it. Just an idea. So Christmas ideas. A battery tender. Balaclava. Some new gloves. Um, a Bluetooth helmet. And a stand. Hey. Do you like this show? Here's a way you can help. Visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash motorcycles. Help me make this a listener supported podcast dedicated to good people like you. Buy me a coffee is a way you can encourage and help me continue to bring you Indian motorcycle radio. Buymeacoffee.com forward slash motorcycles. The link is in the show notes. Thanks. Now, back to the man that once drafted a track player to his Honda for the music. Are you crazy? Ken Blanchard. All right, fellas and ladies, here are some technical tips, technical riding tips, which will work for all bikes. They'll work on any bike, anytime, whether you're cruising on your fat hog, tearing up a mountain road on your BMW, or heading out around the world. The first one is, in traffic, drag your back brake for better balance. Picking your way through traffic at low speed is one of the hardest things we've done as riders. Managing a heavy, unwieldy motorcycle while watching out for drivers and having to try to figure out if your bars are going to fit between those two mirrors, you do lane split, right, requires complete attention, strong situational awareness, good hand-eye coordination, and sometimes ESP. We can help you with the first three, but here's a trick that'll help you make through cars like walking a tightrope Drag a little back brake. Doing so smooths out power delivery and preps you for emergency stops, of course, but by pushing the front end down as you accelerate and easing the bounciness that occurs as you move between acceleration and deceleration, it also seems to help with lateral balance. Maybe that's because it allows you to focus on only side-to-side movements without backward and forward heaves. Or maybe it's simply the added smoothness, but it really will help you eliminate wobbles and uncertainty at walking pace speeds. To do it, don't just stomp on that brake lever and hold it there. Graze it with your toe and keep a minimal amount of pressure. 
barely enough to provide a little friction, just enough so you won't coast if you were to pull your clutch. Try it out. It works. Number two, blip the throttle to make downshift smoother. Grab a lower gear as you're braking. Let the clutch out quickly. And revs temporary spike as the engine struggles to catch up to the rear tire's speed. Downshift too quickly and you'll lock up the rear tire due to the engine's compression. This limits how hot you can come into a corner since you need to manage decreased rear wheel traction as you begin to turn. The solution? Rev matching. By blipping revs to match rear wheel speed, the engine doesn't need to spin up all that sudden. Simple to explain, but take some practice to get right. Because it's all about timing and feel. I think sport bikers do it better than anybody. You see, you're braking with two fingers, right? Good. Use the other to quickly blip the throttle after you pull in the clutch and downshift. Spiking revs to where you think you'll be in a lower gear. If you get that right, you can just let the clutch spring back out to seamlessly engage the lower gear. You should be able to maintain constant brake force while blipping. That plus knowing the amount of throttle to apply and the right revs to reach is where the practice comes in. So go do that and you'll be rewarded with smoother riding everywhere, but especially when flying into corners. Number three, trail brake for faster, safer cornering. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You mean the brake in a corner? Yeah, and it'll make you both faster and safer. But here's how and why. Applying a motorcycle's front brake will slow you down, of course. And in doing so, it'll compress the front suspension and shift the weight onto the front tire, expanding its contract patch and increasing its grip. That has a dual effect of making the bike steer quicker and making it so you can push the front end harder. Together, that adds miles per hour. Now, you should really learn how to do this in a safe environment of a racetrack, where there are no cars around, where vision is good, and where falling down won't necessarily kill you. You hear me? Practice. Just brake a little later in a corner so you'll still be on the brakes a little as you begin to turn. Feel good? Brake a little later the next time and a little later after that. Eventually, after much practice, you get to the point where you're hitting the apex at pace just as you let go of that last little bit of front brake and begin to apply a little throttle. That's right. No coasting. You swap brake for throttle at the apex. Later braking means more time spent accelerating on the straights means faster lap times. It also helps with safety. Because the front suspension will already be compressed, the front tire's contact patch already maximized, you'll be able to use that brake lever to tighten or widen your line without upsetting the bike. That pays huge dividends on the road, where you often come around a blind corner to spot a patch of gravel or similar. Trail braking will help you avoid that obstacle in a safe, fluid, smooth manner. Be aware of the grip a tire has available. Leaning and braking both require grip from the same finite source. The more you lean, the less you can brake and vice versa. As you near max lean, you near max grip. As you near max brake, you also near max grip. Cross the two and you'll be laying on your butt watching your bike cartwheel through a gravel trap. Don't try this at home. This next tip gives you the question, is this corner tightening or opening up? You see, you're in a blind corner, wondering when you can start getting on the throttle. In the absence of other visual references, simply look at the horizon point where the two sides of the road appear to meet. If that point is holding a steady distance from you, the corner is continuing at a constant radius. If it's moving towards you, the corner is tightening. If it's moving away from you, the corner opens up and you can begin accelerating. Sounds like magic. It works like it too. Next tip. Forget the clutch for upshifts. Forgive me if this sounds a little remedial, but I see a lot of guys on the road who don't know how to do this. Works on any bike, be it crotch rocket, hog, or two-wheel Hummer H2. The benefit is smoother, faster shifts, and slightly lower clutch wear. It's just easier and will better enable you to work shifting into the rest of your riding. Ready for the technical stuff? It's super easy to do. As you accelerate, and you're approaching the point where you want to shift up, sneak your toe under the shift lever, feel the gear slip home, and open it back up. It takes a little bit of practice to make it smooth, but once you've nailed it, you'll be surprised on how little time it took. Doesn't work so well if you're cruising around at a constant speed 
or decelerating. You'll eventually just learn to get all your shifts out of the way as you increase speed. Then, be in the right gear for cruising along the highway or whatever. On some bikes, I still use the clutch between the first and the second, just because going through neutral occasionally requires that in order to maintain smoothness, but you'll figure it out. Our next tip, steer left to go right. You know, in class they called it counter steering. It's the most often misunderstood, but most commonly practiced riding skill out here. If you ride a motorcycle or bicycle, you already do it. It's way more simple than it sounds. Go out to your bike. Sit on it with both legs firmly on the ground. Now turn the bars to the left. Which way does the bike want to fall? Yep, to the right. Look at the front wheel. You're creating a point, with it on one side and the bike's main body on the other. The bike wants to fall toward the point. And out on the road, if you're successfully managing to not bounce off every tree and building and car, you've already done doing it, just subconsciously. Consciously practice it, and it will enhance your control over the bike and the speed at which you're able to turn. To do it, go practice in a big empty parking lot. Ride along. Eh, 25 miles an hour or so, and give the bar on the inside of the direction you want to turn a little nudge. You'll turn. Next time, nudge a little harder. Then go out on the road and start incorporating that into your riding. And then there you go. You've mastered the art of the counter steer. And it works on the bicycle too, so feel free to practice on that one first. Where are we at? Number seven. Look where you want to go. Got a car veering into your lane. Tight corner catch you out. Obstacle in the road? Lane splitting? Well, look at the gap where you want to be, the spot on the track you want to reach, not at the hazard or the car or the obstruction. Your body and the bike will follow. Consciously think about this. Force yourself to do it if necessary, but it works. Practice doing it. It will save your life. When shooting a firearm or using a baseball bat, it's called follow through. Look to where you want to go, not at the obstacle. Pretty much is a good philosophy for life as well. Number eight, save your balls, use your knees. You've likely heard or read that somewhere. For better control, you should keep your weight off your hands while riding. But when you're braking heavily, it can be hard to keep that weight off your hands. The solution, grip the tank firmly between your knees, then relax your upper body. Stomp grip or a similar product that gives your legs better purchase on the tank can be a huge help here. Bonus, no more crushed testicles. I'm serious. Real tip. Brake right. The front brake is the most powerful component of your motorcycle. It's capable of altering your bike's velocity far quicker than your engine. It's a far sharper tool than that found in even the most expensive performance cars, and such is also more difficult to use right. Name one Porsche or Ferrari that can loop itself over its front wheel with an occasional brush of the brake pedal. The sheer power of the front brake on performance motorcycles is one of the main reasons we advise new riders to begin on something small and light. Mastering a motorcycle's brakes takes years of experience. But here's a shortcut. Use two fingers only. Kind of hinted to it before. Your index and middle finger. Keep the others wrapped around the throttle. Anytime you need to brake in a hurry, such as riding through traffic, Rest those two fingers on the lever, ready to go. This is called covering. Doing so will help you actuate it smoothly and respond more quickly. It load the front brake to increase the grip. To give yourself the maximum possible braking ability, you need to maximize the front tire's grip. Anytime you start braking, even in a panic situation, start by gently pulling in the lever, compressing the front suspension, and pushing the front tire into the ground. Only once that tire had a chance to compress and spread out, increasing its contact patch and accepting the bike's weight, you can begin to apply full braking force, progressively squeezing harder and harder until you reach the desired level of deceleration. Once the rear wheel starts coming off the ground or you feel the front tire begin to lose traction, you've reached the maximum possible amount of braking for those conditions. Hold lever pressure steady or back off slightly to a level that you're comfortable with. Above all, be smooth and progressive with your inputs. Grabbing a fistful of brake gel to make you crash. Rear brake is great for low speed control, but on non-chopper style motorcycles, contributes a little 
to outright braking power. Under heavy acceleration, the rear tire becomes unweighted and uh, you can go into a skid that way. And finally, the best performance upgrade. The best performance upgrade. Loud exhaust, flashy chromes, fancy tires, and tacky paint jobs won't make you fast, proficient, or safe. But practice will. The best use of your time and money is putting miles under your wheels. Try to find a place that you can practice, that you can learn to increase your skills. No matter how long you've been riding, you can always do better. The life you save can be your own. Well, that's it for this week. I want to thank you for listening, downloading, and subscribing to Indian Motorcycle Radio. You know, I was listening to um, our friend and brother Curtis Sawyer's show, Indian Rider Radio, and man, it is so professionally done. But you know, I realize that comparison is still the thief of joy. And I had to watch myself because I was getting down. I was thinking, man, I don't have nobody doing weather on my show. But that's okay. Hats off to you, Curtis. Man, your show sounds great. And I love what you do with it. Check out Indian Rider Radio if you don't already know about it. On my other podcast, kenspodcast.com, I got a chance to talk to a U.S. Navy SEAL. And the dude inspired me to death. I mean, he just motivated me to no end. Well, sometimes just like you do. But this guy made me think about some of the stuff that I do and that I don't do and things that I can do better. And one of them is as a clergyman, as a person who likes to take care of people, I realized that I haven't pushed the fact that I am available to talk, to pray for, to listen to, um, to be there for anybody who's going through a tough time. And if you are considering suicide, if you are considering ending your life and you want to talk to somebody, you can call me. It's just that easy. 202-579-9435 is my number. It's 24 hours. And you can email me at ken at speaklifechurch.net or here, ken.blanchard at gmail.com. And I'll reach out back to you because... You matter to me. That's more important to me than this other stuff. I want you to fight for your life. This is a tough time for some people. If you're feeling not yourself, if you're not, not, I don't know, just don't want to go on any further, I want to help fight for you. You're worth it. 202-579-9435. And uh, we can get through this thing together. And while you're listening, check out that other podcast, kenspodcast.com, K-E-N-N-S podcast.com. And check out the interview with the Navy SEAL guy and me. All right. Here's to a happy Hanukkah and a very Merry Christmas. I'm hoping that um, you get something that's on your list. Prayers have been sent and we're watching our brother mend, Mr. Gordon, and uh, take care of yourself, man. And all you guys out in Texas and in Florida. Rabbi, I'm hoping you're doing well, and I'm just glad that you guys are in my circle. All right, my friends, that's it for this week. I want to thank you for listening, downloading, and subscribing to your favorite righteous podcast, Indian Motorcycle Radio. Now, may the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon you, and until we meet again, may God hold you in the hollow of his hand. Kick stands up. Let's ride.